Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Electronic Harassment Parent Coalition of Palm Springs, California. My name's Kevin, and welcome to the blog, which, ta-da, just received its 100,000th hit yesterday. Ta-da! Bells and whistles. I am so happy I can't even contain myself. We've been waiting a long time for that to happen, and uh, I'm really, really proud. I mean, I never thought in a million years I would get a thousand hits. Nonetheless, 100,000, and I know some people out there go, well, you know, you know, Colton Haynes puts out a video and he gets a million hits in five seconds. Well, yeah, look at Colton's face. <laughs> this isn't Colton Haynes. <laughs> Come on, guys, give me a break. He's on a television show and, you know, come on. Listen, this is a small blog about a big crime. This isn't a movie star or TV star telling you this. This is some guy that nobody knows from a place where nobody's ever heard of. And I'm telling you about something that most people have never even thought of before. So 100,000 hits is like, I don't know, three times the the size of the town that I live in, you know, so I'm pretty proud of that. And I just wanted everybody to know that works on this project, that that's a major accomplishment. And um, I'm really, really happy that with the lack of, you know, uh, publicity that we get, that we've, you know, pretty much reached a lot of people. And um, hey, you know, that's not something that we should diminish. And it's something of an accomplishment for uh, the people that work on this project and the people that have believed in us from the beginning. And I want to say thank you mostly to you guys out there that come back and read this blog all the time because this is more important than, and I'll even say this to you, Colton, it's more important than, you know, Colton's NSYNC fantasies or Britney Spears, you know, vine dancing or even young Gerald telling Donald Trump to fuck off. Maybe not that last one. But at any rate, what we're doing here is important. And, uh, you know, it takes um, a stone to make a ripple and that ripple turns into something else. And I think all of those people that I just mentioned would agree with me that what we're doing is an important project to help save the lives of a lot of people. And probably something that in time will constitutionally change the lives of even more people. So what we want to do now um, that we have the audience that we have is make sure that more people find out about it and that you, our viewers, talk to other people about it and get them involved in what remote neural monitoring is all about. Um, first of all, I have uh, been telling you for the last couple of days that we are writing a letter now to my friends at the federal government. Um, most of you know by now that I used to clerk uh, for two federal judges, one um, Bill Enright, who is a senior district judge for the Southern District of California, um, a federal judge, and uh, Nita Storms, who is a magistrate judge for the same court in San Diego, um, and the federal prosecutors uh, about the crimes that were committed against me down there um, while I was working for the Department of Justice. Um, and most of you know that while that was going on, I was um, writing diaries about the crime that was being committed about, uh, against me. People always ask me, well, why didn't you just say something when you were there? Well, you know, when people are following you around and you don't know why, and your boss that is in charge of you is telling you things like, I have people following you everywhere, you don't really call that into question. So I never ever said anything to anybody because I had a reason. Um, but I did spend years about um, uh, writing diaries about that, and uh, those diaries were stolen and then later found in the hands of the suspect that we now are investigating. So we want everybody to know that we, um, we do know who this person is, and so with my connections with the U.S. Attorney, with the District Attorney in San Diego, um, uh, my work as an informant for the Palm Springs Police, uh, my future work with as an informant for the San Diego Police Department, um, I've compiled a team of experts, um, not just conspiracy theorists, people that actually know the websites, people that know how this crime is committed, people that were actually sitting in the rooms with the people that were committing these crimes, people that know 
the handwritten notes that saw the girl that did this, that saw her brother going out and doing this, that knew what happened to me in San Diego. We have the witnesses that actually saw the deeds being done. We know how this is committed, and we know that the district attorneys and U.S. attorney want to know more about what this cause stalking thing is all about. And with my connections and with my team and with the uh, police officers that we have, we can do that. And unlike other investigations into this crime, we don't have theories, we have fact. And uh, it's something that I have been really proud to be able to bring to you. Um, but even more so, I'm more proud that my friends will be able to bring this to them. And I want everyone to understand that this has been a labor of absolute love um, in terms of an investigation because this has been going on to me for, you know, 30 years. And the person that did this to me has been, uh, let's just say she's been a thorn in my side since I was in the sixth grade. I'm 48 years old now. Um, she's always had um, some sort of a reason to hurt me. Um, if you've ever been bullied, and if you've ever been the target of someone's hate for unknown reasons, um, mine, I guess, is because I'm gay, um, you know that there is a certain amount of pain that goes along with it. Um, there's a certain amount of, there's nothing I can do to control it. If you're a man, there's not much you can do about a woman bullying you. Um, you can tell the authorities. In this particular case, this girl likes to pretend that she's uh, a poor defenseless woman. She's got a brother that she likes to send out on these little missions that goes out and apparently shoots through people's windows. I had a bullet in my car door while I was driving home one night. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, sorry, it's one of those things where after 30 years, you kind of get to the point where it's like, it's you or me. And, um, uh, I don't want to live the rest of my life this way. And I know who did this. And I want my friends and myself to be free of this. And it's time that somebody learn exactly what's happened to us. If 600 women had been raped in one area, they would find the rapist. If 600 men are raped and given HIV, in the gay community, nobody cares. If 600 men are raped, given HIV, and tracked and thrown in jail, nobody lifted an eyebrow. And after this much time, knowing who this person is, for the police not to have arrested her or had her in for questioning, it is absolutely unbelievable that this crime hasn't been solved and this person hasn't been prosecuted yet. We need to move this case forward so that the rest of us and my friends can move forward with our lives. And I'm tired of seeing these parents have to suffer through what this girl says to us on a nightly basis. Some of the filthiest things that I have ever heard in my life. No parent should ever have to listen to their raped son hear the things that we have to hear. Obviously, a rapist wants to know what their rape victim thought. And this girl gets a daily play-by-play -play of what it's like to hear her victim's thoughts. And I don't think that anybody can understand what it's like to be 30 years into this, having, you know, gone through all of the pain and suffering that she's caused with the relationships that I've had and the people that I've known and the friends that she's infected and the things that she's taken from me and my family over and over and over again. Um, as soon as you rebuild it, she takes it again. And um, I think one of the hardest things has been probably the last eight years when I thought we had this thing solved and it just didn't go anywhere. We know who she is. Uh, we know how it's done. My team's been assembled and ready with evidence now for the past eight years. We have the evidence. We have the witnesses. We're ready to go. 
and we need somebody to listen to what we have to say. We don't have a conspiracy theory. We don't have any conjecture. We have the evidence and we're ready to present it to the U.S. attorney or district attorney in both San Diego and Riverside counties. And we want to save people's lives. And we want the police departments in both districts, in both counties to understand that we wanted to help you to stop this crime. So I know I'm usually pretty uh, upbeat and pretty happy, but um, you know, I, I do this for free. I don't get paid for this. Um, I've been doing this a long time and my disability is running out and uh, I've been very injured. Um, I'm going to have to go back to work full time with the skull that was never diagnosed as being smashed to pieces. If you look at the x-rays, that there's no way that my skull wasn't destroyed and nobody's ever been able to diagnose it. Um, I got to work with that for the rest of my life because the police department wouldn't go and get the job done. So as money runs out and I have to return back to a job, um, I need people to understand that there's a need for this to get solved and it has to be done pronto. And I mean in the next month soon. My friends have suffered for long enough waiting for this crime to be solved. So without further ado, that's the message that we're sending tonight. Um, I know you wish it was happier and usually it is, but I want people to understand that we can solve this crime. We just have to have the people that are stopping us from solving it out of the way or on our side. I think we all know who that is. Thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have a good night.